Men and women, in whom the osseous or bony framework of the body is more highly developed than any other system, are called the osseous type. This system consists of the bones of the body and makes what we call the skeleton. Just as the previous systems were developed during man's biological evolution for purposes serving the needs of the organism, first a stomach sac, then a freight system in the form of arteries to carry the food to remoter parts of the body, and later muscles with which to move itself about, so this bony scaffolding was developed to hold the body upright and better enable it to defend and assert itself. Man is a creature who, in spite of his height, walks erect. He can do so only by means of the support given him by his bony framework. The human body is like a tall building. The muscles are like the mortar and plaster, the bones are like the steel framework around which everything else is built, and without which the structure could not stand upright. How to know him? Prominent ankles, wrists, knuckles, and elbows are sure signs that such an individual has a large osseous or bony element in his makeup. When you look at any person, you quickly discern whether fat, bone, or muscle predominates in his construction. If fat predominates, he leans towards the alimentive, no matter what other types he may have in combination. If firm, well-defined muscles are conspicuous, he is largely muscular. But if his bones are proportionately large for his body, he has much of the osseous type in his makeup. The raw-boned man. Raw-boned exactly describes the experience of the extreme osseous. See chart 7. Such a man is a contrast to others in any group and a figure with which all of us are familiar. But that his inner nature differs as widely from others as his external experience differs from theirs is something only recently discovered. As we proceed through this chapter, you will be interested to note how every trait attributed to this type applies with absolute accuracy to every extremely raw-boned, angular person you have ever known. You will also notice how these traits are predominated in every person whose bones were large for his body. Though this type was the last to be classified by science, it is the most extreme of them all. Physical Rigidity An impression of physical rigidity is given by the extreme osseous. Such a man or woman looks stable, unchanging, immovable, as though he could take a stand and keep to it through thick and thin. So vividly do very tall, angular, raw-boned people convey this impression that they are seldom approached by beggars, barked at by street vendors, or told to step lively. His size looks formidable. The power of his physique is evident to all who look at him. The strength indicated by his large joints, angular hands, and general bulk intuitively warns others to let this kind of person alone. He is therefore unmolested for the most part, whether he walks down the streets of his hometown or wanders the byways of dangerous vicinities. His ruggedness. This type also looks rugged. He reminds us of the rugged Rockies. He appears firm, fixed, impassive, as though everything about him was permanent. Externals are not accidental. They always correspond to the internal nature in every form of life. And it is not accidental that the osseous looks all of these things. He is all of them, as definitely as they can be expressed in human nature. The Steady Man Of all human types, the osseous is the most dependable and reliable. The phrases, that man is steady, never flies off the handle, always the same, etc., are invariably used concerning those of more than average bony structure. Immovability is keynote. The keynote of the bony man's whole nature, mental, physical, and moral, is immovability. Once he settles into a place of any kind, a town, a home, or even a chair, he is disinclined to move. He does not settle as quickly as other types, but when he does, it is for a longer stay. Think how different he is from others in his psychological trait, and how it coincides exactly with his physiological structure. 
The fat man lets you make temporary dents in his plans, just as you make them in a piece of fat meat. But the bony man is exactly the opposite, for as bone is difficult to twist or turn or alter in any way, it takes a long time and much effort, but once it is changed, it is there for good. The Six Footer because any individual's height is determined by his skeleton, extreme tallness is a sign of a larger-than-average bony structure. The extreme osseous is therefore tall. But you must remember that large joints are more significant than height. Even when found in short people, they indicate a large osseous tendency. Large bones for his body. So bear in mind that any person whose bones are large for his body is somewhat of the osseous type, regardless of whether he is short or tall, and regardless of how much fat or muscle he may have. The large-jointed person, when fat, is an osseous alimentive. A large-jointed man of muscle would be an osseous muscular. The small osseous. A very short person then may be predominantly osseous if his bones are proportionately large for his body. Such an individual is called a small osseous. A head that is high for his body and inclines to be straight up and down goes with the extreme osseous type. See chart 8. It does not resemble a sphere like the alimentive, it is not kite shaped like the thoracic, nor square like the muscular. It is higher than any of the others, stands on a longer, more angular neck, and his Adam's apple is usually in evidence. The pioneer type. Like each of the other types, the osseous is a result of a certain environment. Rigorous, remote regions require just such people, and these finally gave rise to his stoical nature. The outposts of civilization are responsible for his evolution. Pioneering, with its hardship, its menacing cold and dearth of comforts, in far countries, at last produced a man who could stand them, who could live through almost anything, and still dominate his surroundings. Not a softy. The osseous does not give way to his feelings. He keeps his griefs, sorrows, ambitions, and most of his real opinions to himself. He is the farthest from a softy of any type. If you desire to know at once what kind of person the osseous is, put the alimentative and thoracic types together and mix them thoroughly. The osseous is the opposite of that mixture. Each and every trait he possesses is one whose exact opposite you will find in one or the other of these first two types. Consistency in Types as we go on in this chapter, you will see why all kinds of people make up the world, for nature has outdone herself in the distinctions between the five human types. Each type is made up of certain groups of traits, with which we have come in contact all our lives, but which we have never classified. And each set of traits comprising a type has a consistency which nothing less than Mother Nature could have produced. You will be interested to see how accurate are the statements concerning each type, and how they are proven again and again in every type you associate with. Guesswork is no longer necessary in the sizing up of strangers. You can know them better than their mothers know them if you will get these nutshells of facts clearly in your mind and then apply them. His high cheekbones. Cheekbones standing higher than the average are always indicative either of a large thoracic or a large osseous element. If the distance between the cheeks is so wide as to make this the widest section of the face, it is probable that the person is more thoracic than osseous. But if his face is narrow across the cheekbones, and especially if it runs perpendicularly down to the jaw corners from that point, instead of tapering, the person is large of the osseous type, built on the oblong. An oblong is what brings the osseous to mind. His body outlines approximate the oblong, a squareness plus length. He is full of right angles and sharp corners. See chart 7. His face is built on the oblong. See chart 8. 
And if you will notice the side head of the next osseous man you meet, you will see that even a side view presents more nearly the appearance of the oblong than of any geometrical figure. The oblong hand. The gnarled hand well describes that of the osseous. The hand outlines of this type also approximate the oblong. See chart 8. It runs straight down instead of tapering when the fingers are held close together. The hand of the osseous matches his body, head, and face. It is bony, angular, large-jointed, and as rigid as it looks. The inflexibility of his hand is always apparent in his handshake. Knotty Fingers Knotty fingers characterize the hands of this type. Their irregular appearance comes from the size of the joints which are large, in keeping with all the joints running throughout his organism. Everything in one of nature's creatures matches the other parts. Agassi, the great naturalist, when given the scale of a fish, could reconstruct for you the complete organism of the type of fish from which it came. Give a tree leaf to a botanist, and he will reconstruct the size, shape, structure, and color of the tree back of it. He will describe to you its native environment and its functions, what its bark, blossoms, and branches look like, and what to do to make it grow. No guesswork in nature. Nature has no accidents. With her, everything is organized, everything has a purpose, and every part of a thing, inside and out, matches the whole. So the hand of the osseous and the face of the osseous match the body and head. This is also true of every other type. The alimentive has small, fat, dimpled hands and feet like his body. The thoracic has tapering hands and feet to match his face and body. The muscular's body, hands, and feet are all square. But the osseous has a bony body, so his hands and feet are equally bony. The man of slow movements. He is too slow for me, you have heard someone say of another. Perhaps you heard it said today. Review the outward appearance of all the people you know who have this reputation, from those of your earliest childhood down to that person of whom it was spoken today, and you will find that every one of them resembled the bony type we have just been describing. Look back and call to mind the appearance of all the rapid ones, and you will find that in every case they possessed high color, high chest, or high bridged noses. Take another look for the easygoing, amenable ones and see how plump they all were. The Straight Laced None of these things just happened. They are the result of the law of cause and effect. The connection between external and internal traits is becoming clearer every day and reveal some very unexpected things. One that has been discovered very recently is that the straight-faced are the straight-laced. Notice for yourself and you will find that every person who is really straight-laced is a person with a straight face, that is, a face with straighter up and down lines than the average. Think back over those you have known who come under this heading and you will find no actually round-faced people amongst them. No matter how sanctimonious, religious, or correct a person may act when his position or the occasion demands it, if he has a round, moon face, he is not really straight-laced at heart. Anyone who knows him well enough to know his real nature will tell you so. The naturally conventional. The born Puritan, the ascetic, and the naturally conventional person is, on the other hand, invariably an individual of more severe facial outlines. This person may be in an unconventional position. Your straight-faced, severe-lined person may be a gambler, a bootlegger, or follow any other line defying the conventions, but he is at heart a conservative after all. For instance, you will always find when you know him that he does things in a way that is very conventional to him. That is, he has decided standards, rules, habits, and requirements, and he clings rigidly to them in the transaction of his business, regardless of how lax the business itself may be. A certain way of doing things means as much to him at heart as it means little to the circular-faced people. Systematic and Methodical a place for everything and everything in its place is a rule preached and practiced by people of this type. 
The osseous person does not mislay his things. He knows so well where they are that he can go straight to them in the dark. Such a man is careful of his tools and keeps his workbench or desk shipshape. A woman of this type is an excellent housekeeper. Her sewing basket, dresser drawers, and pantry shelves are all systematically arranged in apple pie order. The typical New England housewife who washes on Mondays, irons on Tuesdays, and bakes on Saturdays for forty years is a direct descendant of the Puritans, most of whom belong to this bony, pioneering type. The Stiff Sitter Extremely osseous people are inclined to be somewhat formal in their movements. They make fewer motions than any other type. They do not wave their hands or arms about when talking, and are almost devoid of gesticulation of any kind. They sit upright instead of slumping down in their chairs, except when tall and lanky, and usually prefer straight backs to rockers. The Osseous Walk the extremely raw-boned person also has a formal gait. His walk, like all his other movements, is inclined to be deliberate and somewhat mechanical. Nothing about the five types is more interesting than the walk which distinguishes each. The alimentive undulates or rolls along, the thoracic is an impulsive walker, and the muscular is forceful in his walk. But the osseous walks mechanically, deliberately, and refuses to hurry or speed up. The Naturally Poised The osseous has more natural poise than any other type. He is not impressionable, excitable, or arousable. Things do not stir him up as they do other people. He is more self-contained, self-controlled, and self-sufficient than any other. He is not easily carried off his feet and seldom yields to impulse. It is difficult to get him to do anything on the spur of the moment. He usually has his evenings, Sundays, and vacations all planned in advance and won't change his schedule. Not given to nerves. Literally as well as figuratively, the osseous is not a man of nerves. Every fiber of his being is less susceptible to outside stimuli than that of other types. In this, he is the exact opposite of the thoracic, whose nerves, as we have pointed out, are so finely organized that he is hypersensitive. Resists change. Osseous people do not change anything, from their hairdress to their minds, any oftener than necessary. When they do, it is for what they consider overpoweringly good reasons. These people are not flighty. They have their work, their time, and their lives laid out systematically, and do not allow trivialities to upset them. They take a longer time to deliberate on a proposed line of action, but once they have made a decision, adhere to it with much greater tenacity than any other type. The Constant People of this type are not fickle nor flirtatious. They love few, but once having become enamored, are not easily turned aside. It is this type that remains true to one love through many years, sometimes for life. The Implacable The Osseous are not prone to sudden outbursts of temper, but they have the unbending kind when it is aroused. Never forgiving and never forgetting is a trait of these people as contrasted with the Thoracic. The Alimentive avoids those he does not like and forgets them because it is too much bother to hate. The thoracic flames up one moment and forgives the next. The muscular takes it out in a fight then and there, or argues with you about it. But the osseous despises, hates, and loathes, and keeps on for years after everyone has forgotten all about it. The rock-bound Puritan type, as stony as the New England land from which it gets its living, is always bony. The implacable father who turns his child away from home with orders never to darken his door again always has a lot of bone in his structure. Those who refuse to be softened into forgiveness by the years are always of this type. Not adaptable. It is difficult for the osseous to fit in. He is not adaptable, and in this is once again the opposite of the thoracic. It is impossible for him to adjust himself quickly to people or places. 
Because he is unyielding, unbending, and unadjustable, he is called set in his ways. He should not be misjudged for this inadaptability, however, for it is as natural to him as smoothness is to the alimentive, and impulsiveness to the thoracic. He is made that way, and is no more to blame for it than you are for having brown eyes instead of blue. The One Track Man Single track minds are characteristic of this type. They get an idea or an attitude, and it is there to stay. They think the same things for many years, and follow a few definite lines of action most of their lives. But it is to be remembered in this connection that this type often accomplishes more through his intensive concentration than more versatile types. While they follow many bypaths in search of their goal, the osseous sticks to the main track. The Born Specialist This one thing I do is a motto of the osseous. They are the least versatile of any type, and do not like to jump from one kind of work to another. They prefer to do one thing at a time, do it well, and finish it before starting anything else. Because of this, the osseous stars in specialties. <laughs>